Hey everyone, welcome to the Passive Income Show. This is Phil Ebener and our guest tonight is Matt Bernstein, a fellow Udemy instructor who is paving the way with self-hosting his online courses on skillhands.com. Dave, our my co-host, he's logging in, just making sure everything works, so he's gonna be tuning in soon. But Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on, I really appreciate it. Can't wait to get started. Yeah, I'm excited to just grill you about your story of how you got into teaching online courses and everything from the beginning to where you're at right now. And Matt and I are actually co-teaching a course right now on how to self-host your online courses. And it's something that we've been doing a lot um, over the past year or so, transitioning some of our, our courses to our self-hosted sites and having success with that. So I'm excited to hear how Matt is doing with that and hear, have him tell everyone else how he's doing with that. But first, can you just introduce yourself? What is your background? Where are you from? What, what kind of education did you get? What, did you go to school, college? What, what's your background? Hi, my name is Matt Bernstein from skillhands.com and I went to UMass Amherst studying to become a communication major. And during my time there, I actually learned about this income inequality. And during then, th during that time, I was actually selling on eBay and making a pretty decent income for me being a student part time. And I thought, uh, well, I guess we'll get to this later, but I thought teaching online would be a great way to uh, take part in solving this income inequality because making money online kind of evens the playing field for everybody a little bit. Awesome. Dave, welcome. Can you hear us? <laughs> I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you coming yeah, in yeah, loud and clear. Awesome. <laughs> you can oh, hear me so too, weird. right, Dave? Yeah, I can hear okay. you. All right, awesome. I should have said no. That would have been fun. No, I wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now nice. I just have to hold my phone here steady. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, Matt was just introducing himself. Um, I was just going to follow up. So, you went to college, but after college, did you work at any other jobs or did you just do the eBay thing? No, I did the eBay thing and the Udemy thing. So I kind of just transitioned into that and split my time. During college, I was doing part-time on eBay and part-time not studying, I guess. And, and then I just transitioned from the studying part to teaching on Udemy. And I was able to make enough money to to get an apartment in Boston, Massachusetts is where I'm from, born and raised. Nice. And that's just so I like, and I've heard you talk about the whole income inequality thing before and how one of your goals is to teach other people how to increase their own income with things like selling online, whether it's eBay, Udemy. Amazon. And I find that it's it's really powerful if, because for me, I, I was very lucky to go to college, to go to university and not many people get to do that. And so already I was, I had that degree that was able to get me a full-time job that had a decent income, but it was, I had a film and television production degree, which doesn't count for much. And compared to someone who goes to to be a lawyer or a doctor who's automatically in that upper echelon of income, I was nowhere near that. And it was only doing online income, digital products that I've been able to get to a higher income. So as I've seen it firsthand in my own life and in many, many other instructors' lives, how teaching online courses can decrease that income gap, actually. So I'll follow up with the next question. I want to know more about your eBay time and how did you get into eBay and what were you selling? What kind of income were you actually seeing with your, your eBay days? Well, between actually David Spino got me into selling on eBay. This was back in early two thousands and between him and worldwide brands, uh, you know, they were teaching me how to, uh, well, worldwide brands was teaching me how to do wholesale. So was Dave, the drop shipping. I bought like one of his books. Um, I didn't really do much of like the flea market and flipping stuff, but I was selling sealed baseball card cases. That was my niche. So top sells the packs, as we all know, the packs come in these boxes of let's just say 36 
and then the boxes come in uh, cases of of 12 boxes per case. So I was selling baseball card cases sealed anywhere between $500 to $1,500 um, a sale. So, wow. yeah, so I was making... <laughs> <laughs> so I was making around uh, $24,000 in profit on the side while I was studying at school. And uh, that was for me, that was really only like 650 sales a year because I read the book for our work week with Tim Ferriss. And he was saying to not try selling uh, products that sold for less than $250. So mm -hmm. this way I was selling cases that were $500 or more. The wholesaler would actually give me free shipping and I had to sell way less product than I would if I sold something for $25. So there was less emailing back and forth, less fulfilling orders, and it was just more productive and efficient as opposed to having 10 times as many sales and having this probably the same amount of income. Are you still doing anything on eBay now? Actually, I am selling mostly on Amazon. I have a new course about it. Uh, Dave, maybe we can uh, talk a little bit about it on the selling online show that you have. Yeah. And and it's basically, it's. I mean, it's nothing new. It's um, I literally just win eBay auctions right now for certain products, buy low and then calculate it and see uh, if I can match the lowest price on Amazon, how much money I could make. So I invest in you know, 15 products at a time and just sell them fairly quickly on Amazon. And I'm making a few extra hundred dollars a month just doing it like just like 30 minutes a day. And uh, I teach about that. And like, like I just told you the concept of it. Right. But the whole point of the course is I'm going to keep updating it, telling you the products that I'm selling, the products that I bought that I thought I could sell. But it, it ended up being that maybe I broke even or it took me like two months to sell where specific products only take me a week to sell and I make, you know, 50 or 75% profit. There are products that I'm doing right now that they, that does that. So that's kind of the, the value proposition. That's awesome. So it's kind of like you're drop shipping from eBay to Amazon, right? I, I t well, I take the product. Oh, in, take so the product. I'm just using Yeah. Yeah, I tried doing the the drop shipping to save myself on shipping, but there are just like complications right yeah. out right out the, the gate. So like one of the the products shipped to like a customer that didn't even buy the product. So like I'm never getting that product oh, back. Wow. And like so just like I'd rather like get the product, inspect it, and then ship it myself. Which I'm buying smaller products, so I just get free shipping supplies from USPS, and then it takes me five dollars and sixty cents to ship them and i have free shipping supplies and i just go to the dollar store and buy a shipping tape yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh how did you first get started with online courses how did you first hear about udemy so the the creator of of app sumo and sumo me if anybody has a website you're probably using one of his wordpress plugins noah kagan he was uh, i was following him about online business stuff and he was talking about validating your core subject. And he used Udemy as an example to go onto Udemy, search through the courses and see how much of a demand your core subject could get. And this was in late 2013. That's awesome. Got it. So you got, an er you got an early start. Yeah, maybe not as early as you guys, but it, it's, it's early compared to, I guess, if you get in now, like uh, a decent amount has changed. And I know we'll be talking about that in a little bit. Nice. So wait, what was your first course when you you heard of Udemy? And were you automatically like, okay, this is Udemy, this is cool. I imagine it as another form of income. And did you just go for it? Well, while I was in college and trying to make a transition, I knew that I wanted to teach online instead of selling products because number one, after you make the sale, teaching a course on Udemy and selling that it's all automated from there. So once the student buys it, Udemy collects it, and then automatically just gives them access to the course. If I'm drop shipping and I make a sale, I need to email the wholesaler, make sure the product's still even in stock, upload the tracking number, and it and it and if you made it so many sales, it takes up a decent amount of your time doing that. So I knew I always wanted to, and my passion was always in teaching, and I thought that this was 
teaching people how I was selling on eBay was the way that I could help them get out of uh, and have more financial stability. So to answer your question, I don't remember the exact original title, but it was my first course about selling on eBay. I think it was like selling on eBay for beginners and like starting a business online or something. It was called trying to get those keywords in there. <laughs> That's so cool. And it, the thing is that that wasn't, and did you mention what you studied in college? Communications. I, I, I was basically, it was like theoretical about the media that the media basically is the gatekeeper of what information that we get and what we don't. And I learned about all that's wrong with the world. Basically, it was a very depressing major. So, but I knew I didn't necessarily want to do that. I knew I wanted to run my own online business and I actually didn't get into the business school at UMass Amherst. So I took the next best thing and, and I just knew in the back of my mind that keep working at this and you'll eventually succeed and do it full time. Got it. Got it. And I just want to follow up. Was that first course successful? What was it? Did you start making sales or what did you do to make sales with that course? Yeah. So the course was actually successful. My first full month on Udemy, I actually got featured in their top 100 or 300 courses when they used to do that back then. Nice. And when you got featured in those emails, then you were good for about $1,500 a month, at least in my niche. So uh, what I did and what I'm still a firm believer is, is I saw a gap in the Udemy marketplace because I knew at least 9,000 people were searching on Google, selling on eBay and, you know, drop shipping was another 7,000 searches at the time. And um, they're just like, at least in the emails anyways, like I, I felt that they weren't uh, doing like the selling on eBay stuff. And I, I know I later, I guess, when did you join Udemy, Dave? Was it before or after me? Um, I think it was late 2013. I think it was like around, uh, September or so. Okay. So I think I literally joined like two months after you. So I guess like, um, either they just, um, I mean, they just added my course lucky enough into the, into their emails. So I, it was about bi-monthly, they would have these top 100 to 300 courses hmm. and they would send out a an email blast. And if you were in that, that's where most of my money came from. Awesome. Nice. So what would you say online teaching has allowed you to do? Uh, it sounds like you do it full time, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I, I have my own apartment here with uh, Carol, my girlfriend. She's in the other room, actually. And we have a two bedroom apartment. This is designated as the office. <laughs> so we're, we're redoing it a little bit. She just uh, for Christmas, she bought me a new desk. So I got a beautiful new desk and we're setting up the office a little bit so I can film in here instead of the kitchen. <laughs> nice. So has that like, I mean, that's pretty amazing because for me anyways, I graduated from school and I was like so worried about doing this full time. It took me a few years to even get into this. I graduated in 2011 and I had a couple full time jobs, part time jobs and even when I was starting out teaching online, I was, I was, I had a full time job. It wasn't until I was like, year, like at literally probably two years into teaching online with almost a full time income per month from teaching online that I was like, okay, I think you can quit your full time job. All right, were you worried about this? Do you worry about the income going up and down? And has it gone up and down? Does that affect? like what you're doing in terms of creating online courses or do you ever think you have to go back and get another job or your first job? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I think you did it right because you had a full-time job until this teaching on Udemy stuff worked out where it was above your full-time income. For me, when I transitioned from college to living back home and to living in Boston, I actually was living above my means and I was racking up a little credit card debt, which I'm still paying off a little bit now. But I know that, you know, I've lowered my cost and now I'm making uh, more money than I need to live on. So, you know, that's obviously going towards the debt and then eventually into savings. And and there was a time when I was making uh, over $5,000 a month and I didn't worry about it because uh, I thought I was, I thought I was okay. You know, we're doing this, like 
I'm building an asset and I just, I guess I, I took it for granted. So my income fell to a little under $3,000 a month. And then, so, so I learned a lesson because now I'm always worried about it. I'm always worried that somebody's going to be taking market share uh, from my eBay courses, from my uh, you teach online courses. Someone's going to actually the, the top guy on eBay, David Vu. I don't know if, Dave, he might have bought your eBay courses because I know he bought mine and he asked me a few questions and he found like gaps in my eBay courses and he made it better. And then he was the top selling uh, eBay instructor on Udemy. So I'm always worried that, that, the, that the guy from the shadows is going to take what I have. <laughs> and and I yeah. think uh, most entrepreneurs, at least like, you know, when I watch Shark Tank or whatever, even they're afraid of, of what's going to happen with their investments, with their businesses and stuff like that. So I, I think constantly being afraid and being worried isn't always a bad thing. And I actually, <laughs> I, I like it. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, I well, mean, it's, it keeps, it's, keeps you on your toes. It's, it's basically the playing scared, you know, approach that a lot of top sports teams do. They're always looking behind themselves to see who's coming up. And uh, I wouldn't call it afraid or... or or anything like that. I think you're just kind of being wise to see what's out there. I've never considered myself a real competitive person, but uh, the way I do it, the way I keep ahead is I'm always looking to see what's new, what's coming up, what's what else can I uh, create a course on, what new topics can I build on, um, as opposed to trying to be at the top of just, for example, just the eBay space or whatever. Uh, because these things kind of come and go, you know, and, and even over time, even the eBay opportunity has changed a lot since since you and I first started in it. And uh, new opportunities are coming up all the time, especially in this technology world where there's so many new ways for people to, to start businesses. So uh, but kudos to you for doing that, because I think it's a good it's a good way to build your business is to always be on edge and not be too complacent, you know, not just kind of sit back and collect your money <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and and i and i guess too what i meant was especially like in the morning when Kara gets up and goes to work and drives off like what am i doing i'm i'm working from that time to when she gets home and it's arguably even even more because she's got to wait in like unfortunately a half an hour of traffic every day so it, it's like treating this like a business and like i have to go to exactly. work and just working as hard as i can on my working hours when I got complacent, I wasn't necessarily doing that. Yeah. That's a no, great I, point. I think that is something that all three of us have in common. And probably a lot of people listening to this either have that or want to have that mindset of just every moment that I'm awake and I'm working, I want to make sure that it's the most productive work that I can do. Because unlike a full time job where there's meetings, there's lunches, there's talk at the water cooler. Every single moment that I waste is hurting my own business. And so I want to make sure right. that, you know, from the time I start working, which I usually start working around 7 38 till the time I quit around five o'clock every day is productive time. And I, I, I thrive on that. And I, I feel like we all thrive on that. And for people who are new to this or who are wondering about working from home, tr con transitioning from a full-time job to doing this full-time, that's something you have to really think about is can you focus on something full-time and not get distracted by Facebook or YouTube? And we all do that. I do that. But it's it, you're going to have much more success if you can focus yourself for four or 40 hours a week on your own thing. I think this is so interesting. What's most interesting about this conversation is that Matt and Dave are people who have had a lot of success with eBay and Matt learned a lot of how to have success from Dave. And Matt, now Matt is teaching courses on Udemy and elsewhere about how to have success on e e eBay. Dave is as well, but they're both making income from these courses. And so it's just like, you don't have to be, I mean, I would say Dave is one of like the top experts on eBay and Matt, you learn from him. So not that Matt's not a top expert, but Dave has been more well known. He has the infomercial and everything like that. But it's just amazing that Matt can 
have you know just a lot of success um teaching that you don't have to be the world renowned one expert to be able to teach an online course that's what i find so amazing about this right now yeah and and what's really cool is if you're a teacher and your students are success stories that's really cool <laughs> because that's when you really feel like a i feel like a success when i can hear a story like matt's where he got my information from the from tv you know and he put it to use and he made it work. And now he's a success with eBay and with Udemy. And so it's like, it's like having a kid, you know, and you're proud of your kid. Kind of. It's really exciting to have that, um, to have that happening uh, and to see your success stories come, come out. looks like I got a plug in guys. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, ask okay. the next question, Phil. I was going to ask Matt. So what kind of changes have you seen in the entire online course industry over the past few years since you've been a part of Udemy in 2013? So at least the the big changes on Udemy I'll start with is obviously the pricing change. It's no longer the wild west of Udemy because the lowest price I could sell my course at was $10. And I was having a decent amount of success having courses of mine sell for three dollars and i had no problem doing it because number one i was making the most money that i could selling my courses at three dollars instead of ten and then the student was able to save money and get the courses for cheaper and now you can't do that anymore so uh, a lot of instructors were selling their courses for three hundred dollars and then discounting it all the way to nine dollars and you can't do that anymore. It's anywhere between $20 to $50 and it's a 50% discount. So uh, that's, that's, you know, that's, a, that's a big difference, I think, with pricing. And I, I've seen that at least since I've been doing my uh, bottom, bottom of the barrel pricing, it was kind of a race to the bottom on Udemy. Dennis had, Dennis J. Smith, my co-host, had one buck courses. We both had two buck courses and I was selling my courses for $3. So um, at least now the race to the bottom on Udemy is, is stopped at $10. Um, I have comments about the uh, online course pricing as a, as a whole on other marketplaces besides just Udemy. Uh, should, can we talk about that or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you want to talk sure. about other yeah. places, that'd be great. Uh, so there's, uh, I forget the name actually, masterskills.com, where, you know, best selling writer James Pat Patterson and uh, Serena Williams will teach courses on there for $90. So, oh, yeah, masterclass. Masterclass, thank you. So yep. that, that's kind of setting the bar quite high. And comparatively to us, if they're selling courses for 90, how can we possibly? And they basically have like, they answer your questions as well. They, I know James Patterson has a weekly show where he'll go in and uh, make sure that his students are engaged with the topic and if they need any help and things like that. So I feel like that's, that's a, that's setting the bar at, at like the highest price you can kind of sell a course. And I know that Phil and I are on stack social which is a marketplace that sells courses, sells course bundles. So they'll bundle up 10 courses together. And I know that they're doing my, uh, the start a side business course bundle and it's 10 courses, like 50 hours of content and they're selling it for $12. So how, wow. yeah. And, and when people are selling Udemy courses for $10, like, I know this might not necessarily be how it works out, but if a student knows about Stack Social comparative to Udemy and they're seeing the exact same content on that website, how could that same student possibly go with Udemy over a place like Stack Social where they're adding so much more value? So I, I just feel like that's, I mean, Udemy is just one marketplace, but when you take a look at it in the whole, it might paint a different picture. Yeah, it's interesting because it's if we as instructors want to increase our revenue streams, then we put our courses on these multiple places. But sometimes we don't have control of how they price them. And like with Stack Social or Stack Skills, they bring in a lot of revenue because they sell at such high 
um, quantity, those bundle bundles. But yeah, if someone sees your course on both the, both platforms and they see the difference in prices, I could see how that could bring up some tricky questions just about you as the instructor yourself. Like if you're trustworthy for why would you have courses on multiple places with different prices? And so that's something that I've struggled a little bit with and tried to make sure that my prices are the same, at least if it's on my own site where I have the control of the pricing. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, that's a like big, big problem, I would say. But you, But it sounds like you are saying that the lower pricing, you're not against the lower pricing. It's just hard to compete with it when there's these, these options that are so cheap. It, it depends on what your goals are, because I, I personally wouldn't want to charge a higher price to anybody because the people that I'm working with primarily most likely don't have money because that's the whole point of why I'm teaching them because they're not financially stable. So if I can sell them a course for $10, like it'll probably be harder work for me and I'll have to make a lot more sales and it'll take a lot more work, but I think it's worth it because the whole, like, what's my why? My why is to help people become financially stable. Nice. It just we depends on what your goals are. Yeah. Yeah. We had a question from the audience that I want to ask um, to break up our interview from Renee. She was saying that she's bought online courses before and she's wondering how hard it is to produce an online course. So Matt, can you just give a, an answer to how hard it is to create an online course? Well, so for me, my courses are basically just PowerPoint presentations and I'm narrowing, narrating over them. Or if you show something like, you know, my build a WordPress site, I'm basically doing a screen capture of my WordPress site and I'm just narrating over that. So to just film it and edit it, for me, it doesn't take that long. My first course about selling on eBay, I had no idea what to do, like no idea what mic to use, how to even edit a course or do anything like that. And I did research on Udemy. They, Udemy has some great beginner teaching resources. And I bought a Blue Yeti microphone for $90 on Amazon. I bought Camtasia Studio 8 for Windows and Udemy gives a 50% discount to instructors. So that was $150. And then I basically played around with it. I wrote scripts for my lectures. I made the course around three hours long. I made up PowerPoint presentations and I just narrated over it. And as a beginner, and mind you, I did do this full time, but um, I was sick in between. So it's, it's, it, it is hard to film a course if you have a cold or if you're sick or anything. A lot of editing out coughs and, and things like that. So it took me a month to do it. And now just the, my advice would be like, the more that you do, the easier it gets. The only way that you're going to get better is if you create more. So now I'm down to, I can create a course in less than a week. I can create two courses in a week if I want to and do all of my other tasks that I need to do in every given day. So for me, I don't have advice if you're just doing this on the side, if you're, if you're doing it full time, then those are the timelines that it took me. If you're doing it part time, maybe watch an hour less of TV or wake up an hour early or go to bed an hour later and you can just work on it as much as you can. And when you're first creating your first course, not everything has to be perfect. I'm not a perfectionist at all because you can start off and, and have just the, the, minim, the minimum viable product for your course. So basically, what are the amount of what are the least amount of lectures that you can have your um, that you can produce that will um, have the student successful in what you're teaching? And then once you get student feedback based off of that, then you can create the course once you've served. Then you can create more of the course once you've surveyed your students, because you may think you know what the students need, but then they can help you improve the course. Got it. Love it. Let's see. What was we have another question. We got this list of questions. Um, we had asked you about the change. Oh, the change of the 
online teaching landscape. And so did that encourage you to do what you're doing now, which is building your own site and putting courses on there? Basically, it did because I have, uh, I don't have any control over what Udemy does, over what Stack Social does, Skillshare. And it's smart enough to have your own platform and to have direct communication with your students so that I'm not relying, let's say, on the fact that Udemy might take our promotional announcements away or they might take away our educational announcements or limit us to how many times we can email our students. I, I know some very successful people have a daily newsletter. I can't do that on Udemy. I can't do that on any other site. So if you want to have your own unique value proposition, open up your own website, build your own business, and you can have more ownership over what you do. And because of the Udemy pricing change, I think uh, everybody's income kind of fell a little bit. And these are things that we can't control, but we can control them on our own website. Yep, yep. And that's what Dave and I are doing as well. So tell us about your site and uh, kind of what the goal is with Skillhands. So skillhands.com is a website that I teach people how to make money online. It's skills that mostly your school system doesn't teach. It's about uh, making money online, personal finance as well, investing in the stock market because those are other two passions of mine. And I think it's a skill that everybody needs. They need to know personal finance, at least beginner level and basic, because that's just that's just the world that we live in, and at least in the US. And all of my teaching is based off of the US, by the way, because I, I don't have the, the knowledge or the right to teach internationally. Uh, and it's, its unique value proposition is if the, let's say comparatively to the rest of the market, like Udemy and, and all the other places where you can get my courses, you can either enroll in one of my own course bundles, the start and grow your home business. And you can get the whole bundle of my courses instead of paying $10 for each, or you can pay a monthly subscription, all of my courses for $10 a month. And that's, that's just the unique way that I, I can make money on my own uh, skillhands.com as well as there's another Udemy instructor that I think has a, has a great idea. He basically is a newsletter and he just tries to sell that one newsletter for a monthly subscription of $29. And he writes a daily email. And then at the end of it, he just promotes join my newsletter for this much. And once a month, he'll print out all of his articles that he's, that he's written for that month and then send it to his subscribers as well as he wrote a book and he sent the hardcover copy to his subscribers as well. So I'm thinking about how I can do things daily and create content daily, something similar like that, like a daily podcast or a, um, a daily email newsletter. And I have an idea that I just came up with. It'll be one of the ways when we talk about uh, later on, like how I'm driving traffic to skill hands, but that's Excuse me. That's pretty much it to answer your question on that. Got it. And so to build your own site, you are u using Thinkific. And we had Greg Smith, the CEO and founder of Thinkific on our show about a month ago. It was a really great interview. If the followers who are listening now want to find out more about Thinkific, you can check out that. Just click uh, my icon or Dave's icon and you can see our Blab page. Um, or join our Facebook group, which we'll link to. I'll, I'll put a link in a second. Um, but why did you choose Thinkific over something like Teachable or there's other platforms like Zendler? There's all sorts of them now. Well, it was. I looked at Zendler too, and they just it just didn't look like they could compete with Thinkific or Teachable. And I basically just did a side by side comparison of Thinkific and Teachable, and for the price, I, it was pretty much even. Like the they, the prices were the same, but the things that I needed, Thinkific had more of. And I think one of the big proponents was in the Facebook groups, you know, everybody talks about stuff. And one of the things that they were saying about Thinkific versus Teachable was that Thinkific has a much pr more professional and better support system 
than Teachable does. And that right there to me was more of a value than it would have been me going to Teachable. And by far, think Thinkific for the platforms and the services that I've used, they have phenomenal uh, email support. And that right there is why I'll stay with Thinkific until I can figure out how to uh, host it on WordPress or something like that. So I don't have to pay $50 a month, but their service they that they do offer is, is uh, way, far more productive and than anything else than me tr probably trying to create it. I just spent $600 a, uh, a year and I can self-host my courses and how they have everything set up for you is just awesome. That's it. We had a quick question. Do you, can you do a blog on Thinkific? Because I know on Teachable you can. I, you know what? I'm not sure. I just use my WordPress blog and I use Optimize Press because I, I use WordPress and Optimize Press for my main site. And then I have courses.skillhance.com. So I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm sure it's if Teachable has it, then Thinkific either does or will be coming out with it. Dave, I know you're making the switch. Like, do you know if they offer a blog or no? Yeah, I don't know. I am actually just, uh, I was fortunate that they moved a bunch of my courses over to Thinkific for me. So I just went in and started work on my very first course there. So I'm just getting my feet wet as well with uh, with it. But I do like it uh, so far. So, but I don't know for I sure think... if they allow the the blog platform or not. Excuse yeah, me. and te Teachable and Thinkific are very similar. I would say that Teachable is the newer kid on the block, and so I feel like they're trying to catch up to what Thinkific is and has been. Thinkific has been around for a long time, so just things like drip content and all the marketing tools that Thinkific has. Teachable is trying to catch up to that. Um, I'm on Teachable because mm -hmm. I just knew about Teachable before I knew about Thinkific. And at this point, I have all my classes on there. So it'd be a big project to convert. But I'm also thinking I'm just going to stay with Teachable. It's doing what I want right now. It, there's not really anything specifically that Thinkific... It, can, there are probably are things that it can do that Teachable can't do, but right now for me, there's not like one thing that I don't have with Teachable or yeah, with Teachable. So I'm just gonna stay on it. Dave is gonna try Thinkific. Matt's on Thinkific. So I think it's good to have the different perspectives just to see how things go. And um, yeah, we'll just kind of see over the next months and years um, if one actually does end up beating the other and being the best self-hosting platform. And if that's the case, I would switch to whatever that is. But for now, I'm happy with Teachable too. Yeah, and it is really difficult to think just to just the thought of moving yeah. 50 or 60 courses is, a, you know, it's a huge task. And I actually have something like 90 courses on my Teachable uh, site because a lot of those are private label rights courses. They're not my own courses. And um, just the thought of moving that much digital content is it's kind of ominous, you know, to, to think about. So that's why it was really helpful that Thinkific did some of that work for me. They moved about 20 of my courses for me. And maybe they'll do that if you have a lot of courses like you, Phil, and you're making a, a move like that. Uh, maybe they will offer to, to help you to do that. That's true. That's true. I mean, if I can prove that I'm making enough sales that it would be worth it for them, then that's, that right. is a reason for them to try to woo me over to the, to them. Yeah, but it, it is a big deal. I mean, with everything that we have going on with either creating new courses, marketing our existing courses, other projects that we have, you know, the thought of having to move a bunch of courses over, that's, it's, it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we had a question. Let me see. We had a question in the comments that I wanted to... Um, get brought up okay so we got a question um from oh i just messed it up sorry one second this is a good transition into kind of what you're doing with teachable or with thinkific but are you directing your traffic from wherever you're directing traffic to your udemy courses or to to your thinkific courses um now in the transition to promoting specifically just skill hands everything Everything that I want to do now is just for Skillhance. And then I want to repurpose it for Udemy, Skillshare, any other 
uh, way any other revenue stream. So to answer your question, I direct everything to skill hands. Got it. Cool. And yeah, that's a bit, that's a debate going on right now between a lot of instructors and that question, I think it was from Jason was a good one because there's a benefit of directing traffic to Udemy because if you can boost the ranking of your course by getting sales of your Udemy course and getting traffic to it, getting that student engagement, it's going to not only get you those sales from your traffic, but it's also going to have a snowball effect of getting other traffic that sees your course because it's higher in the rankings. Maybe potentially Udemy is going to promote it with their ads or their, their, in their other promotions. So there's an argument for both sides. But Matt's taking the side that in the long run, he wants to have control of his income and he wants to build up skill hands to be his full-time thing, his full-time business. And you got to start somewhere. So it's, it's kind of like letting go of Udemy a little bit, uh, but trusting that in the long run, this is the right move. I, I right, actually, I a, yeah, <laughs> I have a point to that actually. Well, how about instead of directing all traffic to your website, and then Google will help you out and bump you on their search. Huh. So that's that's kind of my plan because Google search is much bigger than you to me. And if I can somehow get on the top three pages of Google for my specific keywords, I think that would have more of an effect than you to me could ever. Yep, so that's true. That's a good point. So I'd rather snowball with search engines than just, I guess, one search engine. Yeah. So, uh, are you doing like a lot of content marketing? Or how are you? How are you building your uh, your traffic for Skillhouse? So the plan is, and what I've been doing for the last two weeks is doing a new blog post every single day and posting it at the ex and scheduling it on WordPress. So it posts at the exact same time. Same thing with YouTube. I want to post one new video each and every day. So I, I want to have like different segments, kind of like different. So like at least Gary Vaynerchuk has like the daily V where he posts, you know, every so often consistently about what he do, does daily. Then he has the Ask Gary V show and he has like entrepreneurship answered. So I want to do like a few different things daily and consistently post content daily for the next eight months and see where that takes me. And I have my sales funnel in place. I am working on getting my email marketing in place. So when I collect the emails, they're actually getting emails. And as long as I create content uh, consistently and doing that, it's, it's mostly content marketing. And, and a funny thought too, it's like you're creating educational content, but then you can repurpose that same content to be promotional. So you posting on YouTube is also educational and promotional and it's just it's pretty much just creating content like all day and and using it for either one of those and that's that's kind of what i've been doing and that's how i've been successful that's great i got a i got a name for you for one of your segments or one of your posts it could be uh feel the bernstein <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah. feel, yeah. when uh, when bernie sanders goes goes by the wayside i'll, I'll just take feel the burn <laughs> take it over yeah. <laughs> I love the idea of doing a daily task or a daily goal. I know the two people that stick out to me that have had so much success with that are John Lee Dumas, who does the Entrepreneur, Entrepreneur on Fire podcast. And he literally started with nothing from nothing. And now he's making hundreds of thousands of dollars per month in revenue from what he's done with that podcast. And mm -hmm. then Casey Neistat, who is a vlogger on youtube and he started a daily vlog where he just you know shot video of himself hanging out doing doing whatever he does he's a film producer and a creative mind and he just hangs out in new york a lot it seems like and travels but he does it every day he's been religious to it for over a year now and now he's one of the most popular youtubers he's getting I, I swear every single time he posts a video, he'll get like a million views within the first couple days. Wow. And he must be making just a ton of money just from not only the, the YouTube revenue from AdSense, but also all the connections he's making because he, ha he has such a, a large presence now. And not that everyone's going to get to those levels just by doing a daily thing, whether it's an article, a newsletter, a podcast or a video, 
But like you said, it's creating so much content and Dave and I are just so passionate about these content bombs of just creating so much content, good quality content. And that's really what's going to make us successful in the long run because we're just going to be everywhere with our content. So I love that idea of doing the daily YouTube video, which I've seen you've, you've been doing and I've been checking out a lot of them. So I, I appreciate them. Appreciate that. We had a question from uh, a new listener. I don't know. I haven't even read this, <laughs> but I'm just going to read it. It's from Shiley. And she says, how many people start with the skill they have, <clears throat> then start teaching versus having teaching skills and then using those skills to put on a course? I'm, an ele- I'm already a certified elementary teacher. What percentage of online course instructors actually have real world teaching experience I haven't taken a ton of online courses like Udemy and the other platforms like that, but I would love to learn more. That's a really good question. Um, So I'll let uh, both of you guys take that one. Matt, you're the the guest of honor here. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Let me just, I'm more of a visual person, so I'm just catching up with the first part. Um, Let's see. Well, at least for me, like I, I start with... I started with the skill that that I was teaching. So I was selling on eBay for seven years before I started teaching about it. And I'm a firm believer that actually there's 22 people in here that all of you have something that you could teach me because I don't know everything and I'm a, I'm a beginner or a novice in a lot of things. So even if you know just like one skill level or one step above me, you can definitely teach me something. And not every course has to be for expert level. There's a lot of demand for beginners, arguably the most demand are for beginner courses. And um, I don't have any real world teaching experience. The experience that I get is from creating courses since late 2013. And that's where my experience came from. And most of my courses are PowerPoint presentations and I narrate over them or screen capture if they call for it. Yeah, and I think um, I would say the majority of online teachers on Udemy do not have a teaching credential or maybe have maybe they have limited teaching experience where they've taught their their subject before. Uh, Maybe they've done a little talk at a chamber of commerce meeting or maybe they've taught, you know, locally. Uh, maybe junior college or something like that, but I would I would still think that the majority of Udemy instructors are not credentialed like that. And uh, the truth is, people want to learn from people who who know the real life, you know, strategies. And the more real you are to to that person, I think the better, uh, because I, I don't think people go to Udemy to hear a super formal instruction. Uh, they go almost like you know night classes used to be where. You would go when I back when I was uh, these guys age, I went to night class for photography and for design, beginning design class. And I love those classes. And I was going there because I wanted to learn more about that stuff. I wasn't going there because I had to. Um, And that that was actually the first time in my life that I wasn't going to school because I had to. And I really enjoyed it. So I would consider that Udemy is very similar to those night classes where people want to learn something new and they want to learn it from somebody who has experience with it and they don't really look too much at the credential having said that if you have the credential that can only help you right and can only be a plus on your uh, on your plus and minus scale with uh, with regard to teaching online so i think it's definitely a positive that you have that uh, skill the ability and the credential on top of it to be able to teach online yeah and i like what both you said is in chuck comments that credentials aren't necessary especially with photography showing like your real photos that's what's going to be the selling point for someone enrolling in a class and so showing that you know what you're talking about is important Um, but I think for me I don't have a teaching credential but I've come a long way from my first courses and so that's somewhere where something like Shiley, you have a credential, you're going to be steps ahead of the rest of us who are learning how to teach because that's a whole thing that we that I had to learn, I had to learn how to teach someone. Um, 
not only just in general, but on a camera. And so you're going to be ahead of people like that. And that, that can only help you. Um, so yeah, that was a good question. Thanks Shiley. If anyone else has any questions, please chat them in. Uh, we, I think we got through all of our questions, Matt. So thanks for answering those. Um, we can, we also have an open seat. If anyone wants to join in on the conversation, ask about teaching online, passive income, anything else, chat with Matt, Dave and I, we got another 10, 15 minutes to chat. Um, we did have a question or, <laughs> or Dave, you go ahead. I was going to say, we had a question earlier about what other forms of passive income are there aside from online teaching. That's something that we could talk about. Cause I know you guys are doing the other, other things too. Yeah, I was just laughing because I don't know if I could take 15 minutes of staring into this little cell phone screen <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> I'm feeling, I'm, uh, seriously, I'm feeling a little dizzy because I'm, I'm focusing <laughs> on such a tiny little screen here for like an hour. It's, it's kind of crazy. I don't know how Jack Wilson did it with when he, I think he was on a phone when we interviewed him. He, uh, he was. <laughs> he's a stand, Dave, he has a stand. I'll show it. You can buy it for $8 on Amazon. I'll, I'll email you a link or I'll, I'll Facebook you a link. That must be it, because I'm holding this thing, and I think the blood's draining out of my brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I so, love it. Anyway, did <laughs> didn't mean to change the subject, but yeah, this is a little crazy. I'm also wanting to answer some of the people here, and I and I can't even you know do that. So yeah, uh, it's a little tricky. But thank goodness I was able to at least get on the call. Uh, yeah, there definitely. Is another option. I'm going to post a link to Dave and my three course bundle. We do have a teaching online bundle that uh, we've put together. We've put together our best courses on how to build your own online course, sell it. So I'm going to post a link to that. It's a crazy good deal for the content and we're available to answer any questions about that. Um, Matt, can you just talk us through what your typical day is like? I think people are probably interested in what is a full-time teacher doing all day? Like what, what did you do today? What did you, what are you doing tomorrow? Do you have a schedule or do you just kind of figure it out when you wake up? Well, basically pretty much every night when I, before I go to bed, I plan out what I want to do. And anytime I see a task that I need to do, I'll write it down and pretty much. So I'll have my day set before I go to work and I just, you know, check them off the list. So uh, today, for instance, I, what did I do today? So I started off with, I'm transitioning as to skillhance.com and directing students to my courses there instead of on Udemy. So I literally went through 135 videos today and I changed the link for the YouTube card to courses.skillhance.com. Very tedious task. If I wasn't so cheap and if I was making more money, I would pay a VA to do something like this. So that's what I did to start off the day, as well as then Phil and I recorded some joint lectures for our new course about how to do the same thing that we're doing, self-hosting your courses on Thinkific and Teachable. So we filmed around three lectures doing that. And I wrote in quick one to two sentence lecture descriptions for 86 lectures about and on Udemy. So I did that. And now I am scheduling out blog posts and YouTube videos. Luckily, you can just batch film a bunch of lectures in, and then you can schedule, you can repurpose the content and then schedule posts on WordPress. So the next seven days, I already have my WordPress posts, my blog posts going out. Same thing with my YouTube videos. And so I don't have to I don't have to work on the weekends because they're all scheduled out now. So pretty much doing batch tasks. Other days I'll record a bunch of, I'll record all of the lectures in a course. So I'll just do the audio for all the lectures. And then another day I'll create the PowerPoint presentations and then edit them together and publish the course. So I pretty much just batch, batch a ton of t uh, tasks together and that's how I'm productive and that could be like a normal day. And uh, after this, I actually want to add in a couple of other things that I'm doing to promote my website because I I, uh, I know content marketing was one of them, but specifically uh, getting more into that and then a couple other things. Awesome. Dave, what about you? What's your What was your day like today? What's your typical day like? 
Uh, today I had a bunch of calls and meetings, so it was kind of a, kind of a different day. But um, typically at night, I'll be editing videos that we pull from these blabs. So I have uh, 21 videos that I uploaded overnight. And now, and what I do is I schedule them. Uh, so that allows me time to go ahead and go in and write the titles, the tags, the descriptions of each video. And then I do a few other things, like I share them out to different social networks. Um, I also ping each video using Pingler to make sure that the search engines know about the video and that kind of thing. So, uh, but today, in fact, after this, I've got a coaching call. So I got to make sure my eyes are straight <laughs> from this call. It's so weird. This is so weird. Now I, I put you guys up on my computer now so I can see there, but then it looks like I'm looking away and not paying attention to you guys. So still weird. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a lifestyle, you know, uh, doing this as a lifestyle. I was uh, commenting on some Facebook group about, um, I forget exactly what I, what I was commenting about, all the work I was doing or how hard I was working or something like that. And somebody said, oh, and they call it passive income. And they were kind of like, I thought it was a little sarcastic because it was yeah. like, you're supposed to do something once and then just get paid over and over again. But then I thought, let me, I, I came up with a good response. And the response is, it depends on how big you want to go, you know, so mm, you can yeah. do a <laughs> lot of work one time and really crank it out and really blow it out. And, and frankly, if you do that, that amount of work, you're probably working like an average person anyway, or like an average entrepreneur anyway, except that you have the promise and the expectation that that work will continue to pay you on and on and on and on after that. So, um, you can, you can be happy with passive income at a few thousand bucks a month, but if you really want to work your butt off for a short period of time and crank it up to 10, 15, 20, 30, $50,000 a month, you have that option too, working just like a traditional entrepreneur, except that the traditional entrepreneur will have to keep working for that income unless they're in a passive income model. And we won't because we have, will have set the foundation in place we have will have built the content mountain, so to speak, a content snowball. And at some point it picks up on its own and, and you, it doesn't require any more, you know, heavy lifting. So um, at first that response, that person's response to me seemed kind of harsh, like, wait, why, why is this guy, you know, harsh in my mellow or whatever to use a, about a 10 year old phrase. And, and then I thought, let me, let me come back with a good answer. You know, let me come back with a constructive answer. Uh, yeah. because I, I think constructive is really depends on how big you want to go. You want to go really big. It's not going to be just lay, lay back on the beach and kick back, you know, like some of the people we're interviewing, <laughs> although <laughs> yeah. they, they've gone pretty big themselves. But, but the point is that, you know, it takes effort, takes work to get to the level that you want to be at. And um, I think most of us, you know, want to, we see it for what it is. We're going to get all we can get. We're going to build it as big as we can. And we're going to make it happen. And it doesn't just happen by itself. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could yeah, agree. Oh, sorry. I, I mean, I could stop now <laughs> and still, I could stop now and still earn thousands of dollars a month or a year, but then it'll eventually just fade out and then I'll have nothing. I want Skill right. Hands to be a million dollar company one day and retire on that company. I'm trying to build an education company for the future. And it, it's all what Dave just said. It's about how big you want to go. That's yeah. It. And I, I completely agree. I have a video that talks about like my top ways to earn passive income. And someone commented something similar, like, oh, that's not passive income or whatever. And yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into creating these online courses, but there are some courses that I've created and I haven't put any work into that are actually still making me money. There's classes that I do put some effort into every month or a couple of weeks to update them. But there are some classes that I don't pr promote. I don't do any work to promote. And I created a couple of years ago and it's still making, you know, 20 bucks a month, a hundred bucks a month. And so yeah, that there is some form of passive income, but to grow it to the point where we're talking about where we want it to be, it's going to take a lot of work. So yeah, it's yeah. Not and, a and I get, also get rich quick scheme. Yeah. I also think of it as like a surfer paddling to paddling a, a, on a wave. And in order to catch that wave, you got to paddle hard 
And once you paddle hard and you, you actually are on the wave, you get to ride it, you know, as far as it'll go. And if it's a big wave, which I think online education and online teaching is a huge wave that's coming up, uh, then you paddle and get all you can get. Uh, if you miss that wave, and I've, I've been a part of a good wave, that was the eBay wave, but if you miss that wave, then you're just one of the other surfers hoping that you maybe catch the next wave. You know what I mean? But the, the key, I think, to being an entrepreneur is knowing where you are at that moment in time and understanding your place in the timeline of that particular opportunity that you're excited about and getting all you can get when you can get it. Uh, because if you don't, you'll be one of those people just going, oh, man, I could have I could have had that. I could have gotten that wave, but I didn't paddle hard enough and I didn't work hard enough to get it. And now look at these guys who are enjoying, you know, all that income. And to cert to some degree, we see that with successful instructors. Phil, you're one of those people who, you know, you benefited from paddling hard and working hard to get the, get that wave. And now you're enjoying the benefits and you're still paddling because you still see the wave is bigger. You know, and there's a lot of mm -hmm. instructors like that who I believe got a good early start and didn't stop. And I actually got started um, about a year before I took it seriously because I was working other things, doing my other business stuff. And then I had to make a mental shift and say, okay, I'm stopping my eBay stuff because I'm going towards online teaching now. And so now I do very little on eBay as far as being a, an eBay seller but I primarily am a, a thousand percent about online teaching. So it's about grabbing the wave when you know it's time, when you know it's the right time to go after it and really go get it. Yeah. And we have a question just about that, about do you think this is a bubble, this whole online teaching thing and it's growing and potentially it will burst. And I'm, that's what I'm hedging my bets that it will burst at some point. But I hope that I grow my business enough that I can last after that bubble bursts. And it's still growing, though. I think we all believe and agree that it's still growing and it still has a lot to grow. I mean, even just you to me, we talk about the numbers of students. They have 10, 11 million students now. That is nothing compared to the number of people in the United States and the people in the world, which is their target audience. So and then this kind of brings us into an another question which i don't know if this should be our last question because it's a great sign off for next week's show but amazon just announced their video direct service and both of you guys <laughs> messaged me separately about it today on facebook and so that's something that we're going to have to d dig into and we're actually going to be talking about it on our blab next week so i'm going to post the link to our blab by that time we'll know a little bit more about how it works and how it might work for online instructors but what do you guys think about amazon getting into the education game well that's uh that's totally exciting and and it was i can't say i didn't expect it i kind of was wondering when amazon was going to get in the game because amazon seems to find up and coming businesses and then they want to just take over that business or at least dominate that business and um We've seen it in a variety of different, because Matt and I are eBay and Amazon sellers. We've seen how Amazon does this. So I've heard now a couple of things. First of all, the Amazon video, was it Amazon Video Direct? Is that what it's called? Yeah. I think that's what it is. Um, yep. First of all, that was announced today. And that uh, seems to be a situation where c digital content creators will be able to publish on Amazon for Prime members. And I did a quick search and I found out that there's an estimated 46 million Prime members in, uh, that are members of Amazon Prime. That's totally an estimate. We don't know if that's uh, for real but uh, because Amazon doesn't release that number. But that's at least four times, possibly five times more than Udemy has. Uh, also, they have four different... Uh, payment structures or four different ways that you can accept payment as a digital content creator. But the other little kind of rumor that I saw somewhere was that Amazon is actually going to go specifically into online course, into, into the online course world. That'll be a separate program from this one. So if that happens, watch out. I mean, it's going to be huge, but even if that doesn't happen, even with just the Amazon video direct, 
imagine having your courses streamed, you know, on Amazon Prime. Like we'll be watching, you know, Iron Man or whatever, and then there will be Matt Bernstein's course on eBay or whatever, or <laughs> Phil's course on photography, you know. And frankly, I mean, we can't compete with Iron Man, but there's going to be a, a lot of people from that 46 million that do go to the special interest or the education tab, and they do, they are curious, and they do start seeing what's available there on Amazon Prime. Because I don't know about you guys, but you know, there's a lot of it seems like sometimes you can't catch a good movie on Netflix or Amazon or whatever. It's like, so that's what, why binge watching is so, so popular because these people have created great TV shows that have series, but it's far, it's really hard to find really good movie movies out there. Yeah. And if Amazon suddenly presents a new alternative or new options for people to consume content and it's interesting to people, man, that could be so big. Yeah. And if, yeah, like, I mean, I'm just kind of repeating what you're saying, but if Amazon, when Amazon does launch their new education platform, we want to have all of our courses created and ready to get on there because it will be bigger than Udemy. And I know that Udemy has changed my life and I can't even imagine if I could get on that wave that Amazon presents. And if I have just a small amount of success, like I've had on Udemy on Amazon, Holy cow. It's going to be crazy. Cowabunga. That's, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> well, well, two, two things. Number one, I'll be spending my day tomorrow, no matter how long it takes to upload all of my courses onto the Amazon video direct, because they've had a, they have a pool of, I think $1 million uh, slated for either May or June starting where they're going to be paying out uh, people who upload their stuff. So that, that should be interesting for comparison. Kindle's up to $15 million pool f- through their uh, members. Uh, and uh, what was I going to say? And then, well, oh yeah, number two, Udemy does have a unique value proposition as we can email our students. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that on any other platform because Udemy right now is the only platform that I can do that on that I know of. So that's, I mean, if Amazon does it, then, then maybe forget about you to me, but I don't, I don't think Amazon will, will do that. Yeah, I agree. I, they, they, they're not known for that. They, they like to keep their client base to themselves. Um, the, the other thing about that is I did have a chance to look at the technical specifications of the uh, Amazon video direct Phil, you probably did too. And I think we're going to really study it between now and next week's show when we get into detail on that. Uh, but it sounds like their video uh, requirements are stricter, and it sounds like they also are requiring uh, closed captioning on on all our videos. So I'm thinking that it may be a good idea to create new content uh, strictly for Amazon Video Direct, uh, and primarily, you know, f- probably face to camera content. What I'm thinking, and this is just theoretical right now, is taking my screen capture videos, my PowerPoints and using them, but presenting them live, like if I'm doing a talk, you know, somewhere, and just using my PowerPoints as prompts uh, to do face-to-camera videos. And then just think about that, though. If something like Amazon Video Direct forces us to create a higher quality video, like face-to-camera HD video, and then we can add some of that content back into our Udemy courses, you know, it gives us so much... Uh, so much uh, leverage to be able to do that. The other thing I want to point out here, though, is I feel like Udemy and Amazon, this stuff is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the online teaching world. Uh, Phil alluded to that a little earlier about how, you know, Udemy is 10 million people, and it sounds like a lot, but it's a drop in the bucket compared to the, the world population and how many people want to improve their lifestyle, improve their skill sets and things like that uh, in the world. So we're going to see, I believe, speaking to the question about the bubble, I think we're going to see big companies coming in uh, already. You know, you learning is talking about working with some of the some of the biggest retailers in the world to bring online courses to their customer base. So we're going to start to see the big players come in and notice this ed tech, quote unquote, you know, world and want a piece of it because for as far as a business it's it's an incredible business i mean digital content 
it's the easiest business to, to, to be in. It costs very little. There's very little expense to digital content. You set up a payment gateway. You set up a way for people to receive the digital content. It's now super inexpensive to deliver digital content. So it's the dream business for a lot of companies. It's a dream way for a company even like Amazon to suddenly add tons of profit to their bottom line with very little expense. So uh, for a lot of reasons, not just that people want to learn stuff, this is the beginning. It's the tip of the iceberg, really. Yeah. Exciting stuff. Exciting stuff. Well, I think we're going to call it a night. Let Dave uh, get away from staring at the, the <laughs> phone so he can get on his coaching call. <laughs> Matt, um, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. It was very beneficial and I hope everyone... Appreciate it, Matt. Thank you so much. Yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed it. I think you gave off a lot of good tips. So for everyone, where can people find you and follow your journey? Well, people can find me on skillhance.com and I would like to say that if you liked the information, you can actually... Check out this course and enroll in a free trial and see that you can get a full picture of most of the things that I was teaching about today. Awesome. And thank you, thank you for that. And I'm going to post the link to our Passive Income Facebook group. For all of you who aren't part of that group, we can continue this conversation throughout the rest of the week uh, offline or online on Facebook. So I'll say goodnight. And Dave, I'll let you close out the rest of the show. All right. Yeah. Thank you guys. Definitely join that passive income show Facebook group. We are, it, it feels to me like Amazon dropped uh, an atomic bomb on the world when it comes to online teaching, digital content creators, uh, they're making a big wave. So we're going to continue the conversation there. And as we said, next week's show, which I think Phil has, uh, has posted or is posting on next week's show, we're going to talk about this and really dig deep. We have a very special, uh, opportunity because Phil is a video expert. So he's going to be able to dig into the details of Amazon Video Direct and give us the lowdown on what we need to create our videos so that it, they comply and they meet those guidelines. And I think that's going to be awesome. So be sure to sign up for next week's show. Until then, I'm going to go give my eyes a rest before my coaching call. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much, Matt, for joining us. We appreciate it. And we'll see you next week on the Passive Income Show, where every day is casual Friday. Thank you so Bye much guys. for having me on. I really appreciate you guys. Great show. Bye, Matt. All right. Have a good one. Good night.